this video um, after the video of rings and sub rings sorry rings and properties of rings we are going to get now a quick video on sub rings so the definition of sub ring is a subset s of a ring of a ring r let's just say of a ring r is a sub ring of r if s is itself a ring with the operations of r okay so let's just say we have a set here under operation addition and multiplication and this is a ring if we have a subset S uh, under addition and multiplication, where addition is the same operation, so S is a subset of R, and this operation is the same as this one, and multiplication is the same as this one. So in this case, we say S under those two operations is a subring. Um, as it happened to groups and subgroups, we also have a test for subrings. Let us call it the subring test, and this this is a theorem. A non-empty subset S of a ring R is a subring if S is closed under subtraction and multiplication. Okay, so this is the, the test. If for all A and B in, in, in S, if A minus B is in S and A times B is in S, then we can say S is a subring of R. I'm going to leave here the sketch of the proof. I'm not going to, to write everything, just give you the, the idea. So you have a ring, okay? So do not forget that addition is a billion here in order for this to be a ring and multiplication is distributive. Okay, so since you know that uh, addition, oh, and you have S, right and the same operations where s is a subset of the attraction of the reals uh, s is a subset a subset of the ring so addition in the ring is commutative so is a billion so addition uh, in r uh, is commutative for a billion and S should be closed under sub subtraction, right? So you can take the what we called the one step subgroup test that will be one of the previous videos and check immediately that S is also a billion or commutative uh, is a, uh, an abelian group okay under addition and the same goes for multiplication um, so multiplication in R is associative right and multiplication should be distributive to addition right or distributive over addition. So the same is true for the multiplicative or multiplication in R in, in S. Okay. So the only thing that is lacking here is to check is if multiplication is well defined or if multiplication is a binary operation on S. Um, but that's what being closed is, okay? If it is closed, then it is a binary operation. So, proved. So, 
um, some examples of subrings. Of course, the set with the element zero, the identity, under uh, the same operations, and uh, the ring itself under the same operations. These two are the trivial subrings of R. Okay, another example the set 0, 2, and 6 is a subring of C6. Um, we are considering here Z6 under addition module 6 and multiplication module 6. Okay, so you can check that um, this set is a subring of Z6. So, another example is if you take n z, and that will be 0 plus or minus 1 plus, sorry, plus or minus 2. No, that will be, one sec, that will be 0 and z, so n times 1, so that will be n, right, uh, 2n, right, 2n, okay, so this n z is a subring of the ring of the integers, okay, Another example, the what we call the Gaussian integers, meaning Z I the set A plus B I such that a and b are in the integers. This zi is a subring of the complex numbers. And another example is the set of matrices a zero zero b. such that a and b are in the integers. So these are the diagonal matrices. This is a subring of uh, matrices of dimension 2 by 2 with entries in the integers. Okay, so we can say that um, the diagonal matrices is a subring of the two by two matrices with en uh, with entries in the integers. Um, it's obvious that a ring might have more than one subring. It might have one subring or two subrings or n subrings. Okay, and we can picture the relationship between a ring and its various subrings uh, using what we call a lattice diagram. Okay, so here we have a lattice diagram. Here we have the complex numbers and we have in this uh, diagram the um, relationship among some of the the, the subrings um, 
So the reals, the rationals, rational square 2, so a plus b square 2. Here, the integers i, and then the integers here. And I think we saw in the previous video something that 2 z is a subring of z, so it is 5 z, but 10 z is also a subring of 5 z and a subring of 2 z, so obviously this will be a subring of z. And this lattice is partial. So we have this the partial subring lattice diagram of the complex numbers.